Hey guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank, and in this video, we're going to talk about how you can initialize arrays in C++. All right. So the first thing that you have to understand is, you know, what do we mean? What are we talking about when we say initialize? When we talk about initializing an array or any variable for that matter, we're talking about defining and assigning at the same time. So in one statement, you're defining the thing and you're assigning a value to it. So you're doing two actions at once. So that way you know that, you know, that thing that you're creating has values that you yourself placed in it. And so you'll know what those values um, are. And so uh, to do that with arrays, we're going to take advantage of these things called initialization lists. Okay. So let's just dig right into it and see what that looks like. Okay. So you can create an array. We'll just go with an array of integers to keep it on the simple side and you can size it. Okay. So something like that, or even better yet, use a named constant. So const int size equals 10. All right. So here we're creating a array of 10 integers. Now this in and of itself does not, there's no initialization going on here because we don't, haven't put any values in there. What's, what's in the array right now? So many times I hear students will say, uh, nothing. It's not true. There's going to be something in any variable or array that you create. There's going to be something. It's just a matter of what's in there. What did you put it in there or did whatever value was in memory at the time just happen to be placed there. So you don't know unless you actually put something in it. So, you know, you could do something like this. You could say, well, a equals a of, um, zero equals five. Okay. Now you got a five in that first element, but this is not initialization. Cause remember what our first definition was you know, when we were talking a minute ago, it's when you define and assign at the same time. So we need to combine all that into one statement. So what we'll do is we'll use this thing called an initialization list. Let's make the size a little bit smaller here so that we don't have to type so much. So four element array, and we're going to say eight, six, seven, five. All right. So there you go. So now this is initialization array initialization. Okay. So we've created an array that's four elements long and we've given it uh, four values. Okay. And so then we can check out what those values are. We can have a little loop here. Um, I less than size and I plus plus. Okay. And then we'll just do a little C out statement just to display what's actually in there, you know, just to prove to you that it worked. So we assigned and defined at the same time. So the eight is in the first element. The five is in the second, the seven is in the uh, third. And then this five here is in the fourth element. Maybe I'll just make this a different value here just so that way it's easier for the example. So eight, six, seven, five, right? So if we build this and run it, then you're going to see that we've got the uh, eight, six, seven, five in there, right? So there, there's that. Okay. Now, um, that's one way of doing the initialization and you can make these initialization lists as long as you want. You just have to make sure that they're no longer than the size of the array. Okay. So you, I got four elements in here. I've got an array of four elements. I got four values for four elements, I should say. Okay. Now, with later versions of C++, they made it to where you could take out that equals. So you don't have to have it and it'll work just the same. Okay. So whichever way you prefer is what you're going to do. Okay. So let me show you another thing here. There's this concept known as implicit array sizing. And what that means is, is that you don't have to put a size declarator in here when you have an initialization list. And that's what this is called right here. This is called an initialization list and what goes inside these square brackets is called a size declarator. Now this is explicit sizing. This is where you're saying, Oh yeah, there's going to be four because you're putting four inside that square brackets, either, you know, as the named constant as we've done here or by putting a little four in there, but you can leave it out when you have a initialization list, because what happens is the compiler takes a look at that initialization list and says, Oh, well there's four items in here, right? So I'll go ahead and I'll just put that four in for you and it works just fine. So you can leave that out, you know, when you use an initialization list. Okay. So that's one thing. Another thing I want to show you, and I think it's gonna be the last thing I'm going to show you here is, um, 
that you can partially initialize an array okay you don't have to initialize the entire thing so let us say that i set this to 10 okay and i went ahead and i explicitly sized it okay if i do that that creates 10 elements but my initialization list only has four values so what's going to happen well what's going to happen is that you know the first four elements are going to get initialized right so just as you would expect maybe right so eight six seven five but we've got six elements left over right let's change this to let's change this to six just so i don't have to type as much so we've got two elements left over so what's going to go in those values nothing is it going to be just garbage i mean what um well as it turns out c plus plus will go ahead and initialize the rest of those elements for you with zeros automatically okay so you're going to see that um, we've got eight six seven five zero zero all right so um, that's just kind of a little benefit of doing that partial array initialization but you can also take advantage of that by doing something like this little, little hacky kind of thing right if i um, just have one value you know one value in my initialization list and i set it to zero well everything there's gonna be zero because the first element will automatically get set to zero and then because of that little feature that i just showed you right the rest of the elements of the array are going to get initialized to zero as well right because you have that default initialization with partially filled um, initialization lists so you can see that um, we're going to have the six zeros Okay, so that is everything that I wanted to show you or that I needed to show you about array initialization. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.